Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of our Asana training videos. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I shared a video on our channel sharing a behind the scenes look at how we've set up our Pipedrive account. And I got some really nice comments on that video from people saying it was really nice seeing a real life example of how to use Pipedrive and people said, we wanna see Asana next. So that's what I'm doing in this video. Today, I'm gonna to share a behind the scenes look at how we use Asana at Minaco. Now, before I get into that, I do want to share some exciting news, which is that we just received a Pipedrive Partner Achievement Award. Uh, as our company, Minaco, we just surpassed $2 million of annual recurring revenue that we manage on behalf of Pipedrive. This is for customers that we refer to Pipedrive or customers who have purchased their subscription from us. And I believe we're the first or one of the first partners to actually achieve this milestone. So I'm super proud of our team for all the excellent work they've done supporting our customers. And uh, thank you to Pipedrive, of course, for the recognition. So I think something like this deserves to go in the, in the background. So let's get into this tour of our Asana account. Now, as always, if you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing Asana for your business, or maybe you need some training for your team to improve adoption and get them following best practices. If so, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our Asana support and consulting options. Okay, welcome to our Asana account. And actually, let me just start by changing this to light mode, just so it's easier to see. And I'll start by explaining the role that Asana really plays in our business, which is that I describe Asana as the hub for our team. We are a global remote team. We're all on different time zones. We work asynchronously. And so Asana is the tool that we use to collaborate. We don't send any emails internally all of our communication happens here in Asana. And so actually a new salesperson that we're onboarding right now, he's primarily going to work in Pipedrive. He will have very few, if any, tasks in Asana, but we will still add him to our Asana so that he can get company updates and see work in progress and things like that. Now to start by explaining how we've structured the teams in our account, we just have two teams. We have this primary team here called Minaco. This is the one we're in here. and Everyone in our organization is a member of this team. And this is where most of our projects live. We have a lot of evergreen projects for the sort of ongoing areas of work like clients, content, and operations that we need to manage. And then we have this retainers team for some of the clients that we have on retainer. We have these sort of ongoing projects for these clients. And so we've just nested those into a separate team. So the teams almost act sort of like folders for different types of projects. Now within this team, you can see on the right hand side, I've actually linked some key resources, uh, which are, as you can see here, some Google Docs, where we can make these SOPs or standard operating procedures that we've created in Google. So we have this consultant SOP, which explains how to look after clients, how to manage clients, our sales SOP, which explains how we sell, operation, administrative assistant, automation, etc. This is basically just important documentation um, that the team can easily access from Asana. So again, we're sort of trying to make Asana our hub and have key resources in one place. Now, if I need to share a company update with the team, again, we don't use email. So we do that using this messages area. So because we have all of our team members in the Minaco team, I can compose a message here and this gets shared with everyone in the team. So here we go. Here's an example of the um, update that I shared this morning about our partner achievement award. I post a message there and everyone can see this. Everyone gets a notification in their inbox. Scrolling down a bit here, we also have some project templates down the bottom. These are for sort of this Asana rollout on onboarding plan is sort of like a larger engagement that we sometimes do. And so we have these templates that act as uh, checklists for how to complete an engagement or project with a client. Um, so really, I've talked about this before, but we use Asana to store a lot of our SOPs, whether it's documents like this or SOPs in the form of templates and checklists, which I'll link up here a video that I shared a while ago explaining how we do that. 
Similarly, in our retainers team, we have a project template here for how we set up a retainer client's project. And if we just look at this briefly, you see actually, this is just an example of not even having um, tasks pre-built in the template, but just we use the template to have a consistent list of sections. And you can see we've set up rules here. So every time we use this template to create a retainer client project, we're using the same layout, the same rules every single time. Now, let me show you how we've set up some of the projects in our account. Uh, let's go back to the Minoco team and let's take a look at this content project. This is what I refer to as an evergreen project. Evergreen because it's sort of ongoing. Content is never finished. It's not a project that we ever complete. And so this is the project where I manage the content, whether it's videos, podcasts, newsletters, etc., that we publish. And I've actually got another video, which I'll link up here that explains how to use Asana to create a content calendar. Uh, but essentially what we do is, firstly, I've customized this project with quite a few task templates. So you can see here, here's the template we use for creating an Asana video like this video you're watching right now. Uh, we have this first task, which I'm doing, record and edit video and upload to YouTube. That's my job. And then this next block of tasks here, these get assigned to uh, my assistant who creates the YouTube thumbnail, uh, puts the video cards in place, puts the description in place. And you can see here in our template, we've even got things like the default description. So this is the description that gets added to the bottom of every video. Um, I need to go in and put in the chapter markers and I write a bit of an intro uh, paragraph as well. We even have detailed explanations about, you know, when uploading this to WordPress, here's how to do it, here's the process. So again, we're really relying on Asana, not just as our task list, but actually as a standard operating procedure to explain to our team, this is how to complete certain tasks. So we have various templates for making videos, sending newsletters, running webinars, uh, recording podcasts. And so here's the video that I'm working on right now. And once I finish recording, I'll assign a block of work to uh, my assistant to go and get that ready. Um, also my editor, who's gonna create the YouTube short and that kind of thing. And so actually I forgot, I'm, I'm publishing this video on Friday and I actually will need to send a newsletter at the same time. So if I go back to my list view here, here's the same tasks in list view. I, I haven't planned too far ahead at this stage, um, but if I go add new task and I'm gonna do an Asana newsletter. So here's that task being created now using our task template. I'll give Asana a second and it will, it will finish creating that. So there we go, it's assigned the task to me, it's filled in the necessary custom fields. And now I'm gonna use, I'm gonna add a due date. And if you watch what happens here, when I add that due date, this is going to trigger a rule to move the task to our scheduled section. There we go. So adding a date, that's what triggers our rule. So I'll, I'll actually, I'll show you that as well. Um, here we go. So when we set a due date on a task, we move the task to the scheduled section and we set the status to planned because we've now planned it. It's ready to go. This is a scheduled task. We have some other rules for things like when we complete the task, set the status to ready to publish. And also if we remove the date, set the status to idea and move back to the planning section. So we have some rules that just kind of put the tasks in the correct place in the project. And so now if I go back to my content calendar tab, you can see that newsletter task scheduled and ready to go. So that is our content project. Next, let me show you our client's project, which is probably our biggest project where we have the most amount of work. Uh, as a consulting business, this is where we store all of our clients. Now, the project isn't actually empty or we don't just have one client. I'm just using a filter up here to show or just to hide all of our tasks so I didn't give away my client list. But this is essentially how we manage a client. Rather than having a project for each client, which we would then have dozens and dozens of projects, we simply have a task like this. So we have the client's name at the top. We assign the task to the consultant on the team who's responsible for that client, who's the one in charge of that engagement or in charge of that project. We then have various custom fields for tracking key bits of client information. So we have the uh, client type down here, we have projects, and these actually, these types map to these sections on the left. So we do projects, we have retainer clients, which actually we're 
we've changed how we do retainers now, as I showed earlier. We do some hourly engagements, we sell some products, some productized services, and we have support tickets that we handle. So this is just kind of like the type of engagement. We put in the value of the client, what they've paid for the project, the status, you know, are we waiting on the client? Are we in a support period? You know, where are they at right now? And then we do use Asana's time tracking features to estimate hours. So here we've got eight hours of budgeted work and we've spent two hours so far. Now these estimated and actual hours actually come from the subtasks down here. So we use subtasks on a client task to map out or plan the deliverables of a project. For example, building a zap like this. And you can see we've got two hours of estimated work on there. And then when we work on this task, we can add in our actual time. So I've got two hours of estimated and I've spent an hour so far. And those estimates and actuals roll up to the summary up here. So we've got those subtasks for deliverables and it's also where we manage uh, and keep track of how many calls we've got with the client. Now this is actually where we use Calendly along with Zapier. So we take all of our bookings through Calendly, which is an external scheduling tool. And we use Zapier, which is a third party automation tool. Zapier will grab the Calendly booking. Once that booking is made, it grabs the, the booking details and it creates the subtask on the parent task like this. I've just recreated this as an example, but this is what it looks like. The task will be assigned to the correct person and it's then assigned with the correct date and uh, estimated hours. So what I just did there manually, we don't normally do that because Zapier just takes care of that for us. And again, I'll link up here a video that I made a while ago actually showing you uh, the Calendly automation process that we've put in place if you want to see more about how that works. And so that's how we manage our clients. This is really nice because we can easily see how many deliverables have we completed, when's our next meeting, we're tracking how much time we've spent on the project and, and what work we have left. As a team, we use the comments down here to, if, if we need to send an update about this client or if I'm following up with my team about a particular task, I can comment on any of these subtasks. Now, because we use the Asana time tracking and we have estimated hours on our work, I can use a portfolio, one here that I've just called team capacity, to track how much work each of my team has on the go right now. So if we look at, for example, Kayla, we can see uh, for today, for example, she's got two hours of scheduled work. These two client subtasks, one and one equals two hours. And so I can look at any person on my team and see how much capacity people have, or I can see red spots like this for Lindsay. She had quite a lot of work last week. She was actually technically over capacity for that particular day. But this is really powerful, especially for me as the business owner, because I can see, you know, how far out are we scheduled? Uh, are we over capacity? Do we need to hire another consultant to take, to take on and handle more work? This is all so much easier to visualize and think about as a business owner using this capacity workload feature. Now we also have, uh, again, some rules and some templates in this project. We have a couple of templates for common types of um, things that we do. So like a pipe drive account review, the types of things we look at when reviewing someone's pipe drive account or setting up a sales dashboard. And then we have quite a few rules going on. I don't even know what all of these do. These were actually set up by Lindsay, my, my operations person. But we have things like when a new task is added to a project, um, Lindsay and I get a comment. We get told that a new client has been added to the project and then Lindsay will set up the various subtasks and deliverables. We then have other rules to do things like um, when a task uh, is completed, we move it to the completed client section or when all of the subtask, or sorry, when all of, when the task is completed and it's not assigned to me, we create a subtask to update our cost in pipe drive because we want to track, you know, obviously how much did we earn from that client and then how much did it cost us to service that client in terms of paying contractors and, and things like that. A couple more rules here that um, work on my team recently set up. We have this one here. So when a client status is changed to scheduled, we create a subtask to update the client on and, and give them an ETA. So we let them know that we've scheduled their work and, and when to expect an update. We also have this one here. If we change the status to waiting on client, we create a subtask for ourselves to follow up 
in seven days. So it's little things like this, little rules that we've put in place that mean we put really good processes and systems in place so that we can manage our clients more effectively. We're less likely to drop the ball or forget about a client. We maintain good lines of communication and it's all facilitated through having really good rules in place in Asana. So that is our clients project, which again is where a lot or most of our work is, is managed. And then we have a couple of other evergreen projects for things like operations. I again refer to this as an evergreen project because it's just sort of ongoing and we have sections for various types of tasks that we need to complete. So we have some marketing related tasks. I have reminders to check my YouTube comments every week. Um, tasks related to updating our own tools and systems. And again, we use task templates um, to streamline and, and create checklists for common types of things that we do. So if we're troubleshooting a Zap for a client, we, we have certain details we like to fill in um, that you know we'll use that template and we'll fill in those details. Or onboarding a new contractor. When a new contractor joins our team, we need to invite them to Google Workspace, set up Calendly. And so again, this is sort of the checklist that we go through for, for new hires. And then we have this leadership project. And this one's really just for me. Uh, it's got tasks related to things like uh, accounting and finance related tasks, uh, invoices that need to be paid. And you can see a lot of these tasks are set to repeat because they're reporting or accounting tasks that I do every month or every year. So a lot of these are set to repeat actually. And again, in the customized menu, I've got task templates for paying certain invoices, for paying an Asana invoice or pipe drive invoice. There's certain processes and uh, steps that I need to take um, or filing a GST return, our goods and services tax, which we do every couple of months. I've written down the process so that I don't forget an important step. I've got links in here to the pages that I need to go to so I can quickly export the data and uh, do what I need to do. And then finally, um, this isn't really how we set up our account at all, but it, it is an important part of how we use Asana, which is uh, every day myself, and I've instructed my team members to do the same, is to go to your My Tasks up here. And this is where, of course, I can see everything assigned to me. So today I'm working on this uh, recording and editing this video. Um, we really live on our My Tasks. Uh, rather than having to click through all the projects, I can see everything assigned to me in one place. And then, of course, really important in Asana is the inbox. As I said before, because we uh, use Asana internally for team communication, this is where we communicate with one another. So here, for example, Liam's put in this nice comment about our award. I can uh, like that comment to show that I've seen it and archive that once I'm done. Um, so this, this really is um, a part of Asana that I'm checking dozens of times a day often you know I'll, I'll see the little orange dot up there when there's a new notification and then I can I can click on it I can respond and so the inbox is something we all uh, check multiple times a day so there we go that is a behind the scenes look at our Asana account and I'll just end by saying that our use of Asana is always evolving it's always changing I've been using Asana for over 10 years at this point and as our requirements as a business have changed, as we've grown, as I've hired more people, and even as Asana themselves have come out with new features, we always find ourselves tweaking and changing how we use Asana. Now, if you like what you've seen here, and if you're interested in finding out how can I make my business more efficient, how can I put better systems and rules and SOPs in place, and how can I use Asana to make my business more scalable, then click the link in the description below to book an introductory call with us, and we'd love to see how we can help you to get the most out of Asana. Again, thank you very much for listening, and I will see you in the next video.